In this section, what I'm doing first is I'm going to fold my uh, solid lining material on the bias, and I'm going to use my patterned overlay chiffon pieces as um, my patterning guide. Um, I'm using the muslin pattern to just make sure that the fabric hasn't moved or shifted or grown in any way. And then what I'll do is I'll pin around the perimeter before adding two inches to the skirt hem to the lining. So I'm going to use the uh, locking compass for my lining marks. And once that is marked out, I'm going to go ahead and use my scissors to go ahead and cut out the bottom. And then I'll go ahead and cut out the top of my pattern. So before I get rid of this, I'm going to go ahead and use a couple of pins and pin throughout the pattern piece. And now I'll lay out a second um, piece of poplin uh, as my lining. And then I will lay out my uh, chiffon overlay right on top of that. Now, um, once again, on this pattern piece, what I want to do is use my compass to add two inches to the skirt hem at the bottom. Once I've added my extra inches, I'm going to go ahead and cut across there at the bottom and then cut out the rest of this pattern piece. And here I've got some extra material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a straight edge and cut one and a half inch wide strips of uh, bias tape from my remaining material. Once again, double check the fit, make sure everything is right. And now I'm going to take my front and back pattern pieces and start working with those. So the first piece I'm going to deal with is the front bodice um, and skirt piece. Um, so there's like a little top part up near the bust and then there's the bottom part. Um, in this specific garment, um, the black portion at the top of the bust is on the straight green and the salmon color lining is on the bias green. How do we deal with this? I'm using a roller cut. A roller foot is a type of presser foot that you use whenever you have materials um, that are, you want to make sure that they're feeding very evenly through your machine. So what I'm doing is I'm using a ruler to mark out 5 eighths of an inch and then I'll line up on the left side of that orange tape my uh, top bodice piece. I'm going to do a line of stay stitching and in this case my stay stitching is going to be a zigzag stitch. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because the salmon color part is all cut on the bias. So whenever you're sewing together bias cut garments of any kind, you want to use a zigzag stitch. The reason you use the zigzag stitch is especially on the bias cut pieces as gravity works on the fabric and gives it the beautiful drape that you want in a bias cut garment. You also want to make sure that the stitching at all the seams moves with the rest of the fabric. So it's best to use a zigzag stitch on this. And you want to go all the way around your pattern pieces with your line of stay stitching. And just a quick note, the line of stay stitching is at one half of an inch, whereas your seam allowance is at five eighths of an inch. Once you're done doing that line of stay stitching, what I'm doing is I'm using sizing because I'm using a cotton synthetic blend, cotton pop, a poplin fabric. Um, I'm using sizing around the edges to iron out and get rid of any like weird wobbly bits um, along the line of stay stitching. Um, here it's going to come in handy in a huge way as I attach this top part of the bodice on the straight grain to the salmon part of the front bodice piece which is cut on the bias grain. So using those two lines of stay stitching, I just stack them one on top of the other, pin along that line. And I'm going to go ahead and sew along my 5 8 inch seam allowance, which should be to the very immediate left of that original line of stay stitching. To make sure that the curve is really nice, I'm going to go ahead and clip the salmon part, the bias screen cut portion, in a few different places so that when I iron everything together, it curves nicely around the bust. And then I'll do the same thing on the opposite side of the bust. And again, um, and in this case, I'm actually going to start by uh, stitching the apex of that point in the center front first. And then I'll go ahead and turn my fabric around and do the remainder of that 5 8 and seam allowance between the black top bodice piece and the rest of the bodice piece. 
So now that I've got that all figured out, I'm gonna go ahead and clip the salmon part, flip it over. I'm gonna cut off that weird little point. And here I'm using a tailor's ham to really press out and get a nice curve on that top bodice piece. 